Hi, this is Norbert Leo Butts, the narrator for Secret War by Matt Michaelish. Narrating an audiobook is a almost purely vocal exercise, and stage is almost purely physical in a way. Obviously, a voice is part of what we do, but really stage acting is all about movement. At least it is for me. Uh, I'm a real physical actor. I find that a real challenge in the booth to find some stillness. The engineers always say, less moving, please, less moving, because speaking is a physical endeavor. You use your whole body to create sound. So you have to find an economical way of using your voice without too much extraneous movement. It's a real challenge, it's, but it's, it's great fun. I'm a parent. I have three kids. Oral storytelling has proven to be integral to my kids' understanding of language. A lot of parents in contemporary culture read to their kids from a very, very young age. But I kept on going. I kept on reading to my kids even past 10, 11, 12 years old. I have a 14-year-old daughter who I've just stopped reading out loud to. I think it trains the ear, and it also works the imagination. The person listening has to use all of their imaginary facility to visualize the story. I think that must exercise a part of the brain that is just invaluable. It definitely plays a role in acting because acting is a purely imaginative art form. It's all about the imagination. So uh, oral storytelling exercises imagination is what I would say. Well, you have to read it, but you don't have to read it in the same way you would read a book just, you know, on your own time. This is a young adult novel, and I found that I could sort of skim it. I had to look at each character. You definitely have to have an idea of how you're going to sound for each character. So more than anything, I had to look at transitions between voices. There's a lot of dialogue in this story, and so some chapters it's just, you know, I can be doing you know, 10 characters can be in a group dialogue. And that's really tricky to switch back and forth because it's a young adult novel. I'm trying to make it entertaining. I'm trying to use a lot of different sort of heightened voices. So you definitely have to prepare how you're going to sound for each character. Here's an excerpt I hope you'll enjoy. Prologue. Unintended Consequences The sun went down on Empire City, and Jack locked all the doors to his apartment, then checked and rechecked the locks. He had work to do, important work, and he didn't want any interruptions. Not now. Not when he was so close. Jack entered his lab and cut the lights to half power. He took a deep breath and looked around. Was he really going to do this? Part of him still couldn't believe he was going through with it, but he was short on options and out of ideas. There simply wasn't any other way for him to find out what he needed to know. Jack had learned a great many things since coming to the imagination, some of which he'd been happy to discover and some of which he had not. Some things eluded him still, like the key to the secret Rostov computer virus he'd been working all year to cure. Jack's powers allowed him to talk to machines and to control any machine once he understood its inner workings. The more he learned, the more powerful he became. Soon he would be strong enough to stop the Rostov and their spyware virus once and for all. He was almost there. Jack was taking on a special research project he put off for way too long. Basic engineering and computer programming studies could take him only so far. Jack needed to study a Rostov system to figure out the final piece of the virus's puzzle, and he knew exactly where to find one. It just so happened that it was located in the absolute last place he wanted to look. The answers Jack needed were right inside him. Jack lay down on an operating table and asked all the machines in his lab to please be quiet. At the moment, he was interested in one machine and one machine only. Jack closed his eyes took another deep breath, and let it out slowly. The time to act was now, before he lost his nerve. For the first time ever, Jack used his powers to reach out to his Rostov parasite. A simple thought was all it took, but the result was rather complex. Talking to the Rostov inside him wasn't like talking to other machines, something Jack did every day. 
With the parasite, something felt different. Jack's mind and the Rostov's mind were connecting on a deeper level than he was used to. He could feel his own heart beat faster as he probed the connection, an eerie reminder that this wasn't some machine separate from his body. It was a part of him. His skin crawled, but he pressed on. The information Jack needed was all there. He could see the parasite's inner workings clearly. Everything from the microscopic nanobots swimming through his bloodstream to the root of the infection buried deep inside his heart. The Rostov circuit architecture was disorganized, its code language haphazard and chaotic. It made Jack feel dizzy and nauseous, but he kept going, studying the alien system intently until something broke his concentration. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Jack stopped cold. He didn't recognize the voice. None of the machines in his lab were talking. They were all being quiet, just as he'd asked. You can, the voice said. You can hear me, can't you? Who said that, Jack asked. Who's there? At first, the only answer was silence. Then the voice returned behind a chilling snicker. <laughs> you know who this is. It's about time you and I got a chance to speak. We meet at last, eh, Jack? Jack broke contact with the parasite immediately and sat up with a jolt. The lab was quiet and still. His heart was racing. Something inside him, something alien, had just woken up. 